If the TikTok algorithm senses that you are a black woman, there's a good chance this sound has slithered its way onto your For You page. No one can pull a white millionaire like a slim black woman with a bad wig. This TikTok, which was posted in November of 2022, sparked the bad wig discourse. This video has nearly 2 million views and the comment section is unanimous in their support for this statement. It's true, they say. It's always a black woman with a helmet wig who has a rich white husband and they're happy for her. It's a simple, relatively innocuous statement, but it struck a chord. It describes something that while nebulous felt you ubiquitous, as viral internet commentary is wont to do. For example, if you've spent enough time on Twitter, you'd know that this kind of smile belongs to a young woman who is invariably engaged. We call it fiance gums. And if you spend enough time on black TikTok, you'd know that the state of this woman's wig implies that she wants a white millionaire husband for Christmas, and she's not alone. Get ready with me to find a wealthy white man. You got to get on your Zoom. Every morning you gotta get on your Zoom at 10. Anywho, I'm ready for the soft life. I got the wig ready. While this trend is born primarily out of jest, it's based on what feels like a kernel of truth. If you're a black woman with a hard wig, there's a pretty good chance you'll have a soft life. This is the cornerstone of bad wig theory. On the internet, the meaning of words seems to evolve faster than ever. For example, aesthetic as an adjective was once used to describe something that is concerned with the appreciation of beauty, but in recent years, it has become synonymous with beautiful. I think the same thing is happening with the word theory. On TikTok, there have been various theories floating around in the past few years hair theory, for example, was less a concrete hypothesis about what different hairstyles say about a person, and more so a trend in which young women displayed their hair in various styles. That was not a theory, that was a side part, but the internet has this tendency to dramatize language to make things appear more important than they are. So we get these theories that don't really explain anything. I would argue that this is the case for bad wig theory. On TikTok, searching bad wig theory will yield funny results of black women in stiff Amazon wigs on the hunt for rich white husbands. There are a few creators who have theorized why rich white men are attracted to black women with bad wigs, but there isn't concrete evidence to back it. The theories are largely anecdotal, but it doesn't mean they're not significant. I just say that to make clear that bad wig theory is less a proven sociological concept and more a general consensus amongst black TikTok users that if you got a stiff wig, your husband will provide. And speaking of general consensuses, I have my own. If your underwear drawer is in need of a refresh, you need to head to Parade. Thank you Parade for sponsoring this portion of the video. I'm so excited to be working with Parade because some of my bras and underwear were truly on their last thread. Parade has comfortable and cute undergarments that won't break the bank. Their products are made with sustainability and inclusivity at the forefront. They go up to size 5XL and have a beautiful selection of colors, coverage, and styles. Here are some of my favorite pieces. The vintage soft triangle bralettes are so comfortable and as the name suggests extremely soft they're supportive but not suffocating which i love i'm also obsessed with this pair of high-rise boy shorts these are so breathable and comfortable they are full coverage but feel like nothing also, this is in the cloud nine pattern and I fully would like to wear these over my clothes because of how cool this print is. If you're in the market for some new underwear, I would implore you to check out the link in the description, head to parade and use my code AMANDA40 for 40% off your next parade purchase. Okay, back to bad wig theory. I think one of the most interesting things about this trend is that it's, dare I say, positive, which feels like a weird way of putting it because bad is in the title, but it's actually not that disparaging towards women with bad wigs because in this context, the price of a bad wig is a wealthy husband. So in a capitalist system, it's worth it. Who cares if your lace is lifting if you don't have to work? You've got the bag and therefore you're winning. Videos of black women fastening helmet-like wigs on their heads in the name of a wealthy husband are met with praise, encouragement, and I'm going to party city as soon as I clock out. To me, this is a welcome respite from the typical policing of black hair by black people. Are you in search of a white man? No. 
Um, what, what I'm doing? Ariana, hey, uh, you look a hot mess. A you hot really mess. Do. I've been trying to tell you. I'm serious. That, that wig looks synthetic. The bag. It's bang. ugly. Come on now. Take that off. You ain't going to with me with that wig on. Right take that wig off, man. At the 2012 Olympics, Gabby Douglas's natural hair generated just as much attention as her gravity defying gymnastics. So, did you hear about the hair controversy? Yes, I did. You did. How were you hearing about it? Twitter. I was so confused, but I don't want to focus on the negative. Okay, but I do. And in 2014, Black Twitter lost any sense of decorum at the sight of two-year-old Blue Ivy's afro. Speaking of, bad wigs and natural hair seem to relate through the transitive property as they both result in pulling white men. Let me tell you right now, I can only pull white boys with this hair, but I'm not mad. Things like bad wig theory, hard wig, soft life, and pasta and lobster are mostly lighthearted inside jokes amongst the black internet, celebrating black women for getting their chad and getting their bag in the process. But I do think this baggage is worth unpacking. Compared to black men, it's not as common to see black women, even if in jest, express and act on the desire to date or marry outside of their race. In 2017, the Pew Research Center found that black men are twice as likely as black women to intermarry. I think the bad wig serves as a symbol to make sense of an uncommon interracial pairing. And while the bad wig trend is currently positive, I think it still has roots in shaming black women for dating outside of their race. Before Pasta and Lobster, a black woman with a bad wig was ridiculed and deemed not black enough, so of course she's dating a white dude. A 2010 Pew Research Center report found that black women are the least likely group of women to marry, especially outside of their own race. I think information like this is why we've seen increasing calls for black women to date outside of their race if they want to get married. What do tennis stars Serena Williams, Senator Kamala Harris, and and businesswoman Melody Hobson all have in common. They're all married to white men, but black women are the least likely group of women to marry, especially outside of their own race. A professor at Northwestern University explores these relationships in a new book called Interracial Relationships Between Black Women and White Men. There's a shortage of eligible black male bachelors due to higher mortality and incarceration rates rooted in you guessed it, systemic racism. In America, same race marriage is treated as the default. Although there is less stigma around interracial marriages now, it is still widely accepted that the natural choice is to marry someone who looks like you. Maybe not too similar, but you get the idea. But when there's less black men in the dating pool and nearly a quarter of them marry outside of their race, black women don't have as many options if we don't expand our romantic horizons. So this answers the question of why black women are increasingly open to dating white men, but where did we get this idea that it's a certain kind of black woman? one with a bad wig. That's what I want to explore in today's video, the roots of bad wig theory, the good, the bad, and the party city. Lots of people have come up with different theories as to why black women with bad wigs end up with wealthy white husbands. I think for the most part, it's because men, especially white men, don't know the difference between a good and bad wig. Frankly, most non-black people don't know how black hair works or what it's supposed to look like. That's why I used to walk around school with box braids to my back and tell my peers that I grew out my hair in a day. They believed me. I still think there's validity in theories that point to a bad wig's ostentatious display of conforming to patriarchal standards of femininity, like this one Tressie McMillan Cotton posted on TikTok. People already think that black women are not feminine enough. So you put that bad wig on top of your head and it says, see how willing I am to conform? <laughs> Not just to your expectations about race, but to your expectations, more importantly, about gender. So believe it or not, that sister in a bad wig is doing some peacocking that is perfectly tuned to what wealthy white men are probably looking for and are able to translate. But to me, the most interesting aspect of bad wig theory has less to do with white men being attracted to bad wigs and more to do with black women who are attracted to the idea of having a provider man. I say black women because that's who we're talking about in the bad wig theory scenario. But in general, women are socialized to believe that a man should provide and that notion has been heightened by this trend. Bad wig theory has picked up again in the past month because of this clip from a popular documentary called Britain's 
splashiest families. Another husband who likes to spoil his wife is Sam Mallin. I love spoiling a rent, <laughs> and, I, and I do spoil a rent quite frequently, actually, in yeah. terms of fashion items that she wants, in terms of trips, in terms of, uh, of jewelry, motor vehicles. I love to see her reaction when I present her with whatever it is that I'm spoiling her, <laughs> her with. I'm like a kid in a, in a toy shop. My eyes go so big. Basically, TikTok took this clip as proof that bad wig theory is alive and well. And while yes, people are dragging her wig, it's a small price to pay for living in a castle and having basically anything you could ever want. She might have a hard wig, but she has a soft life. The soft life trend kind of took off on TikTok in 2022. It refers to a lifestyle of comfort, and relaxation with minimal challenges and stress. Usually people promoting their soft life are stay-at-home wives or girlfriends with wealthy partners. And this falls in line with the ideals of Sprinkle Sprinkle content that has proliferated on TikTok in the past year. If you're not familiar with Sprinkle Sprinkle, it's the tagline of dating coach slash YouTube personality Shira Seven who advises women on how to get a provider man. I, it's 21 young, all my friends are getting engaged. Girl, they must be ugly. Why would, I hope they get engaged to somebody with money because getting engaged to brokenness don't mean anything. She preaches that if you are in a relationship with a man, he should be paying your bills. Sprinkle Sprinkle has become synonymous with getting the bag. Another TikTok trend that ties into this is Pasta and Lobster, which comes from Callie's song, Area Codes. The part of the song that blew up on TikTok goes like this. Got a white boy on my roster, he be feeding me pasta and lobster. I sound like I'm giving a Jeopardy clue. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now the whole team here. Get ready for this genius level lyric breakdown. What she's saying is that her man is white and he has money and he treats her well. The specificity of white boy is significant because Callie is a black woman. And like I mentioned before, black women have not been known to express or act on dating outside of their race compared to other groups of people. Pasta and lobster have become synonymous with a relationship between a black woman and a white guy. There's this overtone that because she's with a white man, she's getting the princess treatment. I find it fascinating that these lyrics have influenced the cultural perception of romantic relationships between white guys and black women. It's interesting that pasta and lobster has a positive connotation because historically, the relationships between white men and black women have had very negative connotations and for good reason. During slavery, black women were routinely sexually exploited by white men. This has informed the sexual politics of black womanhood ever since. As Bell Hooks writes in Ain't I a Woman, this knowledge is used by the white and black public as a psychological weapon to limit and restrain the freedom of black females. It's why marriages among black women and white men are among the least common interracial pairing. Times have changed, society has progressed, but historically, the response to this pairing has been come back home sister, not where's my pasta and lobster. What I really think is at the root of this bad wig, pasta and lobster, soft life, sprinkle sprinkle content is a desire amongst black women to rest, to be taken care of, and to have the chance to opt out of wage labor. Historically, black women, unlike white women, have always had to be in the wage labor market. Ever since slavery, black women were out there with the men in the field. And even after that, most black men weren't paid enough for their wives to be able to stay at home. Black women have always had to work. This is why the girl boss movement was so white woman led because white women were obsessed with getting the chance to be in the same position of power as white men. While black women seem to be stuck on the fact that we haven't even had the chance to be in the position of that 1950s middle class white woman who can sit pretty at home and choose drapery. Not to say that being a stay at home wife is the peak of liberation, it's not, but getting to be one is very different from having no choice but to participate in wage labor and on top of that wage labor, still have to do the reproductive labor of running a household. That's why these bad wig relationships are so romanticized. They show us a black woman who is well rested and taken care of. She doesn't have to be strong. That's not the image of black women that most of us grew up with. 
In fact, this is the image of black women that a lot of us grew up with. This painting is Blue Monday by Annie Lee, and even if you didn't know the title, chances are if you were alive and black in the 90s, you've seen it at some point in your life. The painting depicts a black woman in the wee hours of the morning, willing herself out of bed. We can't see the expression on her face, but her hunched shoulders and slipping nightgown say everything we need to know. She is tired. The day hasn't even started, but the weight of the world is on her shoulders. Blue Monday encapsulates the experience of the working black woman who is up before the sun rises and often laboring long after it sets. She is weary, but far from frail. There's no question that she will get up and do her job. This painting is the underbelly of the strong black woman trope. She is not invincible or supernatural. In the bedroom, in the cool hours of the morning, she is in her most vulnerable state. This is who she really is. She is human. This image has been deeply relatable to so many black women, but it seems we're at a point where we don't want to relate to this image. We don't want to keep up a facade. We want to discover who we are in the absence of struggle. But a bad wig isn't the solution. It's a band-aid. Don't get me wrong, black women deserve loving relationships where we are taken care of, but we shouldn't conflate pasta and lobster with liberation. We've got to be a bit more imaginative than that. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and this is just sort of my take on the bad wig theory. It's really less interesting to me about the actual state of the wigs and more like why we as a people are so fascinated by this trend and why it's so popular. So this is kind of my thought on that. I think it really ties in with all these other trends that we've seen going on in the past few years where people don't want to work, they want a soft life, and I think this is just like the next iteration of that. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I am excited to hear all your thoughts below and uh, don't forget to check out Parade and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! I got a white boy on my roster. He be good at me pasta and lobster. Ow! Oof. <sighs>